here to give you the praise on today, Father. Father, for all your wonderful acts that you have performed uh, through us and in us and for us, Father. Uh, Father, you have uh, given us uh, provisions, Father, in this pandemic, Father. Father, you have provided for us, Father, when, when no hope was available, Father. Uh, jobs are closing down, Father. Businesses are shutting down. The economy is bad, Father. Uh, Father, but you, you're still worthy, Father. You're still faithful, Father. We thank you for that. Father, people are sick, people are dying, Father. Father, people don't know where to turn, Father, but you, we know we return to you, Father. And you have not let us down, not even one time, Father. So, Father, we thank you on today, Father. Father, it has been a rough year, Father. Father, you're faithful, Father. We thank you for that, Father. Father, continue to bless us like no other can. Like no one, no one can, Father. Father, you're better to us than we are to ourselves, Father. Father, the government is in disarray, Father, but you're still, Father, you're still faithful, Father. Thank you. Father, thank you for everything, Father. Father, we give you the praise on today, Father. Father, bless our pastor. Father, keep him. Father, encircle him with, uh, with power on today, Father, as he stands to preach your word on this morning. Father, energize him, Father. Invigorate him, Father. Father, give him the wisdom, Father. Give him the knowledge, Father. Father, bring back to remembrance what he has studied all week. Father, allow him boldly behind this sacred desk and give us the unsearchable riches of your holy word on today, Father. Father, we pray for those who are sick, those who are shut in, those who are in need of your provisions, those who are without, those who have nowhere to turn, Father. We lift them up right now, Father. Father, we ask that you be faithful to them, Father. Give them, bless them, Father, and whatever they need on today, Father. And Father, before we close this prayer, Father, Father, we ask for forgiveness of our many sins, Father. Uh, Father, we have a transgression against your word, not just one time, not even two times, Father, but many times. Uh, but Father, you're so careful and so compassionate and so loving, Father. Uh, Father, we thank you for that. And Father, we also pray that um, someone on today gets saved, Father. We ask that the person who is nearest to hell, Father, we ask that they come running and accept your Son as their Lord and Savior today. We pray for every soul that is not under the, under the, under the umbrella of your Savior, um, called Jesus Christ, Father. We pray for their salvation right now, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Chad, come on and bless us with the love of Son. Amen. Amen. We serve an awesome God, Chad. We serve an awesome God. Yes, sir. You're an awesome God. We serve an awesome God. Yes, sir. It's going on like the Lord. There's no one like the Lord. High God is all. He can move.
December. Wow. We're having a great time here in the sanctuary of New Pilgrim. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We're holding things down for you. Amen. So we just bless God's name again for this privilege He's granted us again to be in the house of praise and prayer just one more, one more time. Yeah. I just I want to be, I want to be brief today, but I certainly want to be beneficial. Marie Weston was impressed, but there was no room 
on the shelves for Estee Lauder. Right. Mm. Mm. Russell told him he's going to have to come back until we can get some room on the shelves. Then she did. She rushed back the next week and the requester made room on the shelves for right. uh -huh. Estee Lauder. Uh -huh. She now has a million dollar company. All because she was willing to win. And that's, and that's what David is talking about here in this text. The, the, the theological editorial on this song is interesting because David says, I waited. It literally says in Hebrew, I waited, I waited. And all of us know something about waiting. Many of us don't like waiting. We, 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 we want everything right now. We live in a microwave society. We live in a microwave society, but we have a God that operates in crock pot fashion. All right. We, we, we want microwave maturity. M microwave ministry. But oftentimes, God puts us in the crock pot. Yeah. It takes time when we put food in the crock pot. You have no doubt it's going it's to get ready. But it's going to take some time. It's interesting how many of us want to rush to get what others have. But we don't want to go through the measures that others went through to receive what they have. We, we live in a society where we just can't be still. And wait on God. G. Campbell Morgan said, Waiting is not going to sleep. Waiting on God is not being lazy. Waiting on God is not about abandoning an effort. He says, Number one, waiting on God is activity in place. Under God's command. Right. Number two, he says, waiting is not only activity under God's command. He says, number two, he says, secondly, waiting is always being ready to move at God's command. Right. Uh -huh. And thirdly, he says, he says, waiting is like being under God's command and never moving until He commands you to do what He wants you to do. That's waiting. And somehow we look at this text today, and David says, I waited patiently. <laughs> David, David is in a crisis here. He, 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 he's in a situation where he has no choice but to wait. Now, whether, whether David is in this crisis because he manufactured it, we don't know. Or what, what he was going through was acting upon him. But what we do know is that David was in a situation that he needed God's help. What, what, waiting, wait, waiting, God places us in the, in the waiting room of life. We, we don't like the waiting room of, of life. But God has a way of developing us through the waiting room. Now, now I want you to notice that while David is waiting, God doesn't 
give him a treat. Mm. He gives him a try. Mm. Mm. We, we want to have treats while we're, while we're waiting. Take our children to the doctor, they always have some little suckers to give them while they're waiting. But God, God offers us some trials that put some weight on us while we're waiting. God wants us to learn something while we're in the waiting room. And God wants us to understand that he could easily take us through the waiting room instantly. But we won't grow that way. You don't grow by going through your trials instantly. And God is trying to develop us while we're going through our, our trials. David, David here says, wait. I waited patient, past tense. David said, I waited. David was used to waiting on God because he knew that, that God could bring him through. And it's always good when you're going through something and you got the weight on you to remember how God lifted in time past. <laughs> David, David seems to peek back in time and remember when God brought him through some things. Now, now they, 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 and, and we have this song here uh, for us because David has gone through whatever uh, God had laid up on him. He went through it. And now we have this song that we can pick up when we're going through some things. When the weight of a pandemic is on us, when the weight of the coronavirus is around, when the weight of being unemployed, the weight of not being able to make ends is the weight of having to stay home, the weight of having children not being able to, that's the weight that also on us. But David shared with us, you can worship God even while you under the weight. into businesses and marriages and moves and everything because they didn't wait patiently on the Lord. Now, number one, let me just say this. Number one, it's, it, God, God wants to teach us in the waiting room. And the only way he can teach us in the waiting room, he has to give us the test in the waiting room. And our test is to see not what we can obtain, but what we have retained in the teaching. But I know this is important for us to uh, go through the test to, to, to prove and to show God what we have retained through our testing. But it's also good for us to rely on God's timing. God's timing is extremely important. You got to wait on God's. Time. God's time is not like our, our time. We have to learn how to wait on God. We, 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 we move sometimes without even consulting God. And that's not good. So David says in this text, I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined unto me. First point is I want to look at David's desire. I want to look at David's desire. D David's desire was that God would just hear him. Yeah. D D David, D David just wanted God to hear him. And oftentimes, God is waiting on us to tell him what he already knows. God already knows what we need, but he's oftentimes waits on us to ask him for what we need. The, the David's, David's desire. The David was in a horrible situation. The, the, the David was down. Uh, the, the, the David described 
his ordeal as being in a pit. Uh, in, in, in the mire clay. He, he describes himself uh, being in a situation where it's slippery, it's muddy. He doesn't have firm footing. The day he said, I was in a mess. Uh, and have you ever been in a situation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever been in a mess yeah, and needed God to come through and clean you up out of the mess? This is the same David that was crowned king and had to wait 13 years before he took the throne. The, the, the David uh, what was, was tended to his father's sheep while he was made a king. Anointed the king. Can you imagine being made king and still tending to sheep? That, that, that's God's process. All right, all right. Uh, uh, moving us. Uh, from 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 the trials of life to the throne, <laughs> David had to labor thirteen years before he was took the throne. <laughs> thirteen, thirteen years. He would hear prophets tell him he was a king, but yet he didn't have a throne. But God wanted to to test him to see how he took care of his. Father and lost sheep before he would give him his own sheep. The house of Israel would take care. Sometimes God will give us minimal, minute jobs that we have to stay with and labor with until he gets ready to, get, to elevate us to do what he wants us to do. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes God makes us wait because we're not ready to handle what God is going to give us. Got a little bit quiet. I got that one time. Sometimes God yeah, yeah, yeah. puts us in the waiting room yes, to develop us and to get us ready for what He's about to bring into our life. He knows sometimes what we want, we ain't ready for. He, he, thank God He knows us better than we know how. I said, Yeah, God, God puts us in the waiting room and up to get us ready to develop us. And, and oftentimes, God, God will leave us there until he know we're ready to handle what he's about to give us. So David desired, now, now, now number one, David desired, but, 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 but watch his patience. David waited patiently. Can, can I just tell y'all, there's it's three types of rooms. You have the ready, waiting room of life. The whining room of life. <laughs> then he got the winning room of life. <laughs> God puts us in the waiting room. <laughs> because he wants us to, want to get us to the winning room. But between the winning room and the waiting room, there is some space in the place. Your urgency 
urgency is not God's urgency. And so God oftentimes just have us to wait. And then, and, then, and then I love this because the apostle Paul helps us out. In Romans chapter 5, verse 3, he said, we glory in tribulation also. But Paul says, we glory in tribulation also. Now notice he said the word glory is in the Greek word kakakamai is the idea of boasting. It's the idea of bragging. We, we, he said we, 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 we brag and we boast about having tribulations. Now the word tribulation, I told you before, is the word for the which means pressure. It's the idea of someone who had their hands tied and their feet tied and, and, and someone places a boulder right in the middle of their chest. And the boulder literally squeezes the life out of them. Paul said, we, we boast when we go in through our tribulation. But now notice, 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 Paul, Paul, Paul didn't say we boast about tribulation until he first told us we got access. So you, you, you can boast, you can brag on God when you're going through something, when you know something. Paul said we have, we have, we have access in verse 2. He said we have access into his presence. A prosagoge, it's a compound where prosagoge before the goge means to bring, uh, uh, into, he introduces you to the Father. And so you you in the presence of the Father, so whatever comes your way, you can handle it because you in the presence in the hand. He said, we, we boast in, in, in our tribulation, verse 20. And the Lord, we brag about it. He said, listen, he said, because we know something. We, 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 we know that tribulation work in patience. That's what he said. We know that tribulation work in patience. We know tribulation working patient. We know that tribulation working patient. We know that tribulation pressure working patient. So he puts us under pressure. He puts the weight on us. And he wants us to remain under the weight until he gets ready to bring us out of the weight. He puts the weight on us and tells us to stay under it joyfully. <laughs> he puts the weight on us and tells us to stay under the weight joyfully. Have you ever noticed when you're going in uh, to work out? Mm. Whether it's on the treadmill, whether you're on the treadmill, whether you're lifting weights, whether you got barbells, have you ever noticed that the weight equipment never changes? <laughs> weight equipment, and some of y'all got some weights at your house. Some of you got some treadmill that you're using for clothes right now. You got equipment. Yeah. But the equipment don't change. Doesn't matter how hard you work, how long you work, you can't change the treadmill. Yeah. It was a treadmill when you got on that morning. If you decided to get off that end, it's going to still be a treadmill. But the only thing that changes in the weight room is you. The weight equipment helps change you. You don't change the equipment. The equipment changes you. If you use it right. And so God wants us in 
the waiting room will put the weight on us. Yeah, yeah. So again, this, he's trying to build a better you. All right. All right. He's trying to build a better you. David says in this text, he said, I waited patiently for the Lord. Watch this now. He said, I waited and I waited and I waited. And he inclined unto me. In other words, in other words, God, God stretched himself. And where he got, he, 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 he literally, he, he, he stretched himself. And as if God stretched his hand down to him. And watch this. And he heard my cry. If you wait patiently, God will not only listen to you, he'll look toward you. And not only will he listen to you and look toward you, he will latch hold to you and pull you up. The text says, the text says, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined I mean, her, now, you, you, me, me, now, watch this. Waiting does not mean that you're doing the thing you want to do. See, sometimes waiting means you gotta be wise in your waiting. All right, all right. You, see, you gotta be wise in your waiting. That was a story. Little farm boy uh, had a wagon full of corn, uh, and his father uh, had a driving wagon, and the wagon uh, happened to turn over. Spilled the corn. One of the neighbors came out and said, Willis, leave that corn there. Come on in and eat dinner with us. I'll come out and help you later. Put the corn back in the wagon. He said, no, he said, I can't do this. My, my daddy's not going to like that. He said, he said, son, don't worry about it. I will come out and help you put the corn back in the wagon. He said, come on in. Come on in and eat with us. But he said, no, my, my daddy's not going My daddy's not going to like that. So the man finally convinced Willis to come on in. He came in, ate, got cool, relaxed, feeling better, thanked the farmer for inviting him in. He said, now, he said, my dad don't be upset. So the farmer finally asked him, where is your dad? He said, he's up under the way. <laughs> you gotta be wise. <laughs> In your way. You gotta be wise. In your way. Who have you left under the way? While you go on under the heat. Go on to enjoy life. Who have you left under the weight of the way? Rather than trying to stay there. First reply should have been, my father's a bundle, I can't go. My father's a bundle. No, he, he, didn't, he didn't say anything about his father's a bundle. He just went on with it. Oh. Gotta be careful how some people mean well when they invite you in. Or invite you all. They mean well. But they, they don't know what you know. You gotta come up, you gotta come out and be up front with them. Tell them what's wrong. They, they, David said, watch, watch this, David said, I'm going to get out of here. David said, he, he, he brought me up out of a horrible pit. So not only do we see David's desire, we see David's deliverance. And not only we see David's deliverance, verse 3, we see David's delight. We, we, we not only see David's patience, but we see his delight. And not only do we see his plight, we see the place that he, that he had in the plight. Yeah. And see, we see, we see the, the place, the plight, and the problem. We see all of that in verse 1. Uh -huh. But even though we have problems, God still wants us to stay in the waiting room. Yeah. Well, I know verse 13. Yeah. The, 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 the verse 13, I mean, uh, Psalm 13 starts off, Lord, how long? And that's some of our things on. How long will I forget me, oh Lord? How long will I have to go through this situation I'm in? How long will I have to be broke? How long will I have to uh, go through this trial that I'm going through? How long will I have to be lonely all the time? And everybody else getting somebody but me. How long? It's not a matter of how long. You see, your, your, your grade is not given. Your grade is not given 
by how you come out of your way. Your praise is given how you respond in your way. God, God breaks us. God breaks us on how we respond in the way we right. He said, he, 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 he brought me up out of. And this is somebody else. He brought me up. He brought me out. This is somebody's testimony. That, that listen, you hear the day, but you haven't always been in church. What what has God brought you out of? That you can share the goodness of God to others. What 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 where 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 were you? When God picked you, picked you up. What what where where were you? When God delivered you. God, God, God is in the delivery business. God, there's no doubt that God can deliver you from your pit problem, your pit predicament, but God wants to see whether or not you have matured enough in the waiting room. Watch how you respond in the waiting room of life. The waiting room of life will determine how well you do. In the winning room. If you go whine all the way toward the winning room, it delays your winning room. God has been trying to move some of us to the winning room, but He can't get us to stop long enough to quit whining, quit complaining, quit mumbling. Quit grumbling and be grateful. The, the, David says, he, he brought me not only out of a horrible pit out of the mire clay, but watch this. David says that he set my feet on on a rock. In other words, my life was unstable. But I waited long enough. Oh God, I, I didn't whine while I was late. But I waited on the Lord and he established and put my feet on a firm foundation. In other words, I, I was walking, I was slipping and sliding in the dark, put my feet on a solid ground. Have I got a witness here? And so David says, not only did God pick me up out of the modern plate, and not only did he set my feet on a, on a rock, but then God allowed me to have a, a song put in my mouth. Uh, it's right here. I'm not making it up. It's in verse 3. He has put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto my God. He said, many shall see it and even and fear and shall trust in the Lord. In other words, I'm just a walking billboard of what God is able to do. Will see what the Lord has done in my life. And uh, they will fear and uh, trust the Lord. Uh, that's why God allows us to go in the waiting room. Yeah. He's developing you to be a walking billboard. Yeah. He's developing you to be a walking billboard that others may look on you and see what the Lord uh, has done in your life. Uh, and watch it how you waited, and watch it how you waited, and watch it how you waited. And so when they go through that trial, they can say he did it for them. Uh, he can sure do it for me. Uh, because what God does for all of us, he can do the same thing for you. Uh, and it made me say, I waited patiently. And I got a witness here. Not only did I wait patiently for God uh, to hear my cry, and not only did I want God to hear me, but God uh, was able uh, to incline unto me. Uh, he stretched his hand out, uh, and then uh, he pulled me up. Uh, and I got the witness here. Not only did he pull me up, he stood me up. Uh, not only did he pull me up and, and stand me up, he, he not only he took me up. Uh, so the text said, uh, he put a song in my mind. Uh, yeah, and somebody going through some stuff uh, and God needs to tune you up uh, he needs to put a song in your mouth uh, have a battle with this uh, the Bible said he put a song in his mouth uh, the Bible said he started praising the Lord uh, have a battle with this here God uh, wants you to praise his name uh, in the midst of the wait uh, while you're in the way and 
freedom. Lord, praise God in name. And then if you can't think about what you're going through right now, can remember how far he brought you from. Can remember when you were rich and done. On your way to a burning hell. And you sang God. You stood by your side. You sang God. Pull you out. You sang God. Stay by your side. You said you wouldn't be in. You wouldn't be here today. But God heard your cry. He heard your cry. And it climbed up to you. And the Lord alright. I said, ain't you alright? Stay on your way. And stay in the way.
to tell with all your mind, all your heart, all your soul. And that's everything that makes me you. Pick up on the place, God. You can't worship God and cook at the same time. You got to, you got to, you got to move some stuff. Anything that will distract you from worshiping God. Yeah. 
singing to us. He's singing to him. He can hear you with or without the lines. He can hear you with all the lines. He wants us to sing unto him and worship him. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Luke says in Acts 35, it's more blessed to give 